How's it going guys? It's Kyle or the How To Guy123 here and in today's video I'm going to show you how to create a Windows 7 virtual machine in VirtualBox. To begin, if you don't have VirtualBox downloaded and installed already, I'll leave a link for it in the description below. Once on the download page, go down to where it says VirtualBox Platform Packages and we can download VirtualBox for Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. Anyways, I'm going to skip the installation process for VirtualBox as it's pretty straightforward. On Windows, VirtualBox installs like any other program. With VirtualBox installed, the next step is to download a Windows 7 installation image. I'll include a link in the description below to malwarewatch.org where you can safely download a Windows 7 64-bit ISO image. Malwarewatch.org is managed by the YouTuber Enderman so we know it's safe and trustworthy. This site has ISO files for pretty much every version of Windows. Look for the Windows 7 x64 ISO in the list and click on the link to download it. Go ahead and save it anywhere on your computer. I'm going to save my ISO to my desktop for easy access. The Windows 7 ISO file is roughly 4GB so it might take some time to download. Now that we have our Windows 7 ISO file downloaded, one last step before creating our virtual machine is to ensure that we have virtualization enabled in our computer's BIOS. To easily check if we have virtualization enabled, we are going to want to open up Task Manager. On Windows 10 and 11, you can do this by right clicking on the taskbar and selecting Task Manager. Once Task Manager is opened, click on the Performance tab then click on CPU. At the bottom, look for where it says Virtualization and make sure this is set to Enabled. If it says Disabled, then you will need to restart your computer and boot into the BIOS, then enable the Virtualization setting. I have made a video on how to enable Virtualization, which I'll link in the description below if you need it. Enabling Virtualization is crucial as a disabled setting will cause the virtual machine to crash on boot and display an error. Now that we have virtualization enabled, we can open up VirtualBox and create our virtual machine. To create a new virtual machine, start by clicking on the new button. This setup window will come up and I recommend switching to expert mode so that your setup interface matches mine. First, under name, Enter any name you'd like for your VM. I'll call mine Windows 7 Tutorial 2025. Next, under Folder, choose a location to save your VM files to. Since virtual machines can use up a lot of disk space, I recommend selecting a drive with plenty of room. I typically store my VMs on a 14TB hard drive, but you can leave it in the default location if that works for you. Now, under ISO Image, Click the drop down, select other, and open the Windows 7 ISO file we downloaded earlier. Open the addition drop down, and here you can choose the addition of Windows 7 that you want to install onto your VM. I'm going to install Windows 7 Ultimate in this video. For type, make sure this is set to Microsoft Windows, and for version, make sure it's set to Windows 7 64-bit. Be sure to check Skip Unattended Installation, then open the Hardware drop-down. For base memory, this is the amount of RAM we're going to be allocating to our virtual machine. Windows 7 requires at least 2GB or 2048 megabytes of RAM to run smoothly. You can allocate half of your computer's total RAM. To check how much RAM you have installed on your computer, open Windows' Settings, Click on the System tab, scroll down, then select About. Under Device Specifications, you'll find your installed RAM. For example, my PC has 32GB of RAM, so I could allocate up to 16GB for the VM. However, allocating that much RAM is pretty unnecessary for a Windows 7 VM, and I recommend setting the base memory somewhere between 2GB or 2048 MB and 8GB which is 8192MB. For processors, this is the amount of cores we are going to allocate to our VM. I'd recommend bumping this up to at least 2 cores. 
I have an 8 core CPU, so I'll allocate half of the amount of cores on my CPU to the VM. I wouldn't allocate all the cores on your CPU, as it may cause stability issues for both your VM and host machine. Finally, open the hard disk dropdown, and make sure that create a virtual hard disk now is selected. Now choose a size for your virtual hard disk. This is the amount of disk space that our virtual machine is going to have for our OS, along with storing programs and files. By default, it's set to 32 gigabytes, which should be fine, but you can increase the virtual hard disk if you'd like. Leave the hard disk type as VDI, VirtualBox Disk Image. Now click Finish to close out of the setup window. Now that our VM has been created, make sure that it's highlighted in the list and click the Settings button at the top of the screen. Click on the Display tab and bump the video memory up to 128 megabytes. You can choose to enable 3D acceleration and bump the video memory up to 256 megabytes, especially if you want to have the arrow effects enabled on your desktop. However, I've noticed that when you have 3D acceleration enabled, it can cause some graphical glitches and artifacts on the screen, so I recommend keeping it turned off. Click on the OK button to close out of the settings. We can now click on the Start button at the top of the screen to launch our VM. Your VM is going to open in a new window, and it's going to boot into the Windows 7 setup. Once on the Windows 7 install setup, we can choose the language to install, time and currency format, and keyboard layout. I'm just going to change my time and currency format to English Canada. Now we can click the next button, then install now. Accept the license terms, then click on next again. Now you'll be asked which type of installation do you want. Select custom, and you'll see one unallocated disk that Windows 7 can be installed onto. This is the 32GB virtual hard disk that we created earlier. Select the disk, then click next. Windows 7 will now begin to install. The install can take some time depending on the speed of your computer. During the installation, we'll be asked to reboot our VM. Click Restart Now, or wait for the timer to run out to restart your virtual machine. And after your virtual machine restarts, you'll be asked to press any key to boot from a CD. Do not press any key, and just wait for the screen to pass. Otherwise, you'll be put in a boot loop. We'll then be brought back to the Windows 7 installer, and it's going to finish up the installation. Once the installation is complete, your VM will restart on its own. Once again, you'll be asked to press any key to boot from a CD. Do not press any key and just wait for the screen to pass. The installation is pretty much complete at this point, and Windows is setting up our VM for first use. Afterwards, we'll be brought to the setup screen. To begin, enter a username for your user account. I'll just use tutorial for this example. Then, give your VM a name. You can name it whatever you'd like. I'll just call mine Tutorial VM. Once you've set a user and computer name, click Next. You'll then be asked to set a password and hint for your user account. I'm going to leave everything blank just for this tutorial. Then click Next so my VM won't require a password to log into it. You'll then be asked to enter a product key. Here, we can just click Skip. Next, we are asked if we want to install updates automatically. There aren't any more updates for Windows 7, but in this case, I'll just choose to use the recommended settings. You'll then be asked to set your time zone. Once your time zone is correct, click Next. Finally, you'll be asked to configure your network settings. You're most likely just going to want to choose Home Network. Windows is now finalizing our settings, and after this, it should bring us to a welcome screen and start to prepare our desktop. This might take a minute or two. And there we have it, we have now reached our Windows 7 desktop. However, we're not done yet. We still need to install VirtualBox Guest Editions. This will add some drivers to our VM, enable full screen mode, enhance performance, 
and provide additional functionality. To install guest editions, go up to the toolbar at the top of your screen and click on Devices. In the Devices menu, choose Insert Guest Editions CD Image. Then click on the Start button in Windows 7 and open up Computer. Here you will see VirtualBox Guest Editions under Devices with Removable Storage. Double click on it to open up the Guest Edition CD. Then double click on the VBox Windows Editions application to launch the VirtualBox Guest Editions installer. Once it is opened, minimize the folder. Then click on the next button to continue. Click next again, then install. VirtualBox Guest Editions will then begin to install. During the installation process, you'll be asked if you want to install this device software. Check Always Trust Software from Oracle Corporation, then click Install. Once the installation process is complete, you'll be prompted to reboot your VM. Choose Reboot Now, then click Finish, and your VM will restart. Once you're back in your VM and have guest editions installed, we can now try and full screen our virtual machine. To do so, click a view at the top of your screen, then select full screen mode. If prompted, click switch. Your VM will now be in full screen and take up the full resolution of your monitor. To exit full screen, you can hover your mouse at the bottom of the screen to bring up the toolbar, then click view, then select full screen mode again. Alternatively, you can toggle full screen by pressing the right control key and F on your keyboard. We can now eject the guest edition CD from our VM. Head back into computer. Select the VirtualBox guest edition CD, right click on it, then choose eject. The last thing I want to go over in this video is installing an up-to-date web browser. Currently installed with Windows 7, we have Internet Explorer 8, which is too outdated to load most web pages. It can load Google, but anything else will give you a this page cannot be displayed error. Instead of Internet Explorer, I recommend installing Supermium. Supermium is a modern web browser based on Chromium, the same foundation that Google Chrome uses, and it supports Windows 7. I'll leave a link to where you can download Supermium in the description below. You'll need to download it on your host machine, which is your actual computer, and then transfer it over to your virtual machine. Once on the GitHub page, click on Releases on the right hand side of your screen. Look for the latest version of Supremium, and under the Assets section, click on Supremium 64setup.exe to download the 64-bit version of Supremium. I'm going to save the installer to my desktop for easy access. After the download is complete, we need to transfer the file to our VM. The easiest way to do this is by enabling drag and drop in VirtualBox, allowing you to simply drag over the installer to your Windows 7 VM. To enable drag and drop, click on Devices on the toolbar at the top of your VM window, hover over drag and drop, and select Host a Guest. Now move your VM window to the side of your screen, and simply drag the Supermium setup from your host machine to the desktop of your VM. As you can see, the Supermium setup is now on my Windows 7 desktop. However, I found that drag and drop can be a little bit glitchy sometimes, and if you encounter any issues, you should try using shared folders to transfer files to your VM. I've created a tutorial on how to use shared folders in VirtualBox, and I'll leave a link to that video in the description below. Now that we have the Supremium installer on our VM, double click on it to open it. Click yes when prompted to install Supremium, and the setup files will be extracted. A setup window will appear, and make sure to check create shortcuts for Supremium. Then click on ok to proceed with the installation. Once it's finished, you'll see a message confirming that the setup has completed successfully. Click on OK to close out of the setup window. You should now see a Supermium icon on your desktop. 
double click on it to open up the browser. You'll then be asked if you want to sign into Supremium, choose don't sign in, and if you'd like, you can click sit as default to set Supremium as your VM's default web browser. And you'll see a very Google Chrome looking browser open. You should now be able to load any web page without any issues. As you can see here, I was able to load Microsoft.com just fine. I can even try and watch YouTube videos and the playback works just fine. And that's pretty much all there is to installing Windows 7 in VirtualBox. Before I end the video, a quick disclaimer. Windows 7 is no longer receiving security updates, so it's vulnerable to security risks. As long as you use it cautiously, avoid installing anything suspicious, and don't sign in to any important accounts like your email or Google account, you should be just fine. Anyways, thank you for watching. Leave a like if this video helped, and I will see you in my next video.